Hi, how are you? I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World and I just want to talk about some of my most favourite tools. I just love doing texturing and all sorts of different things to do with um, patchwork and quilting but I find tools can make my job so much easier and we all live in a busy life these days so let's just share with you some of the tools that I love to use. I don't know if you know about our circle collection, these are what we call the nested circles they go from six and a half inches down to one inch. And the nice thing about them is they all come apart. So if I want to draw a six and a half inch circle, I put this on the fabric, I draw around the outside edge, that would give me six and a half inches. But if I want to draw my stitching line, I draw a line in the center on my fabric. That's my quarter inch seam. If I wanted to add a half inch seam, I'd put two together. Now I have a half inch seam. So I just find it very easy to draw circles on anything. Here we've got some circles drawn. So we used our different sizes, we put it down, we drew around the outside, then I nested another one into here and I drew the inside circle. Now it, there's so many different things we can do with circles. You can see just for example, this is one little example, but there'll be lots more we can show you later on um, as we um, do more videos for you. All of these flowers were made and these circles were made using this nested circle set. For example, we've drawn the line and we always start from a square of fabric because we're going to do stitching. I find cutting a circle out like this and trying to stitch around it is too hard. Starting from a square is better. This one here we've drawn the circle, just the one outside edge. We've stitched right on the line and then we've come back and we trim it back to your quarter inch or thereabouts. Just trim all the way around and that's much easier to stitch that circle doing it that way. Once we've got that done, we've then put a split in the back just with our scissors. Then we're going to turn that through. So turn it all the right way out. Just get in there and get your fingers in there and push it all out. And I use this little tool called a Hira marker. And I can run that around inside and that will flatten that all out for me. Give me a nice crisp circle. Then I would press that so it looks like this. Then if you want to make some gorgeous little folded flowers of any kind, all we're going to do is we want to hide this split. So fold over like so and you can leave a little bit of the contrast colour exposed. Just press. And then you can come back and you can now put some little pleats in this to fold it into a folded flower. Let's just get this right. So we can put tiny little pleats into this. As we pleat it up, I put little dots of the Roxanne glue basted, just where I want the pleats to stay in position. This is my favourite tool, this glue. Just put little dots of glue in there, press it with a hot iron to set the glue and keep pleating up till you get this gorgeous little flower. So you can see how it's all pleated. It's just pleated in, put a little dot of glue in here, pleat this one up, put another dot of glue and then come back from this side and you've got another one. So you can make any size. You can make some gorgeous little things. Make them whatever, to fit whatever um, application you want to use them for. The other thing we can do, we can just start with a basic circle. Now to do this, we can make all these hexagon circles. So I'm going to use the bigger one so you can see a bit better. Fold it in half, press, fold it into quarters and press. Then all we're going to do is open it out. Now once again, use your glue, put a little dot of glue in the center. Fold in and press. Don't worry about the glue, it doesn't stick to your eye. 
Now we'll put another dot of glue back to the centre, we fold in, press. And we're going to keep going around and wherever this point is here, this point gets folded to the middle. Let's keep going. And in a few minutes you've got a beautiful little hexagon flower that you can stitch anywhere where you need to put them to add an interest to your creation. And I love just fiddling with things like this to get it to this stage. Now we're back to the beginning and see how the two points come together? Another dot of glue folded in. Oops, so there's our hexagon flower. Oops, didn't stick. Let's give it another little stick. And it doesn't tuck the last end in nicely, but this is where we can come back and put another one over the top. I could even put a smaller one in by using the little inch circle, put another one in there. So can you get the idea of all the different things you could do with these flowers? You could put this flower down and then you could put a hexagon over the top. You could put that on top of that one and then put another one on here. So you can build up some beautiful little images. The other thing we can do, we all know about yo-yos, making yo-yos. I just cut out all my circles for my yo-yos using the circles that I want. I drew the two lines on here, the cutting line and the folding line. And we're just going to fold this back and by hand just fold right back onto that drawn line and just do a row of gathering. Then you pull the gathering up and you've got a beautiful little yo-yo flower. Great for decorating with. So just pull it all up and it gathers it up beautifully and you create your little flower. So they're just a few things that you can do with the nested circles. I do draw a lot of quilting lines on my quilts using these tools. Um, they're really handy to have. And talking about quilting lines, if you can see the little quilt at the back, you can see we've got all straight lines, but we've got them going in different directions. I find marking a quilt with a marking pen can be a challenge. You know, you've got to use the right pen and know that the lines are going to come out because a lot of marking pens, they, the chemicals can set with heat. We've got to realise that the light on our machine creates heat that can set chemicals in a marking pen. So when I mark most of my straight lines on my quilts, I use the Hira marker. And when I use the Hira marker and I want to draw a straight line, just get my ruler out, If I'm going to draw a straight line on here, all this marker does is put a crease line in your fabric that you can then stitch on that line. And I just find it a great tool to mark up any coloured fabric. Just run it up and down there a few times. If you want to change directions, change directions. Just use a straight edge. If you're going to be stitching feathers on your quilts, do the spine of the feather. So then when you're stitching the feathers, you've got a guideline. If you're a beginner quilter, why not do two more lines? They don't have to be even. Now when you do your feathers, you've got a guide to go to. And it just is a reference for you to make things a little bit easier. If you make a mistake, get your iron and press the crease out. If you want to mark onto a, a, a different coloured fabric, the Hira marker will mark any coloured fabric for you so that when you go to your machine, the lines are going to show up. And I know that's very hard for you to see there. And this is why I use this fantastic light at my machine. Okay, this is a little LED light. You have a Velcros on the back that this part will stick to the machine and then it Velcros to itself. It runs off a USB, you get the USB cord and the plug with it. Stick this onto your machine and when you're now quilting, you can bend this arm to wherever you want and you're going to see your lines perfectly when you start to quilt. And I know that's very hard for you to possibly see at the moment, but guarantee you can see your lines. So even when I'm stitching anything, like dark colours, when I was quilting this at night, 
it's hard to see. So put the little light on and you, it lights it up beautifully. You can see exactly where you're stitching. When I stitch really close to the edge, do top stitching, I bring this light right down close into the needle wherever I can get it. Then I can see as I sew that I'm sewing right on the edge. And it's made such a difference. I don't know, this age thing's not good though when you start to lose your sight and can't see everything. So that's another one of my favourite tools, that and the light. I use them all the time. They really help me out. The other thing um, that I've designed up are the strapper, bag strapper set for making straps for our bags. And using those tools, I've made um, the straps for here. I've used one of my other tools to use to make the binding for around the edge. And I'm just going to explain a few of those things. So using the bag strapper set, it's different to our regular um, sashing tools, different to these. These ones here I've designed just to put plain fabric through. These ones are designed to put fabric with some batting or wadding in. And this split is much wider here than what these ones are. Here we've got a strip of fabric cut it's cut four inches wide. I've cut a piece of batting four inches wide. Fold the sides in, both sides. Press the start, it's just the way we use all of our tools. Come up from the bottom and back down. Pin into your ironing surface with the double fork pin to give equal tension on both sides. And then all we do is press with the iron. And that will give you a gorgeous padded strap for your bag. Now if I wanted to do this as a smaller double fold, I would fold this in half and I would put it through the smaller tool and just press it with the iron and then I'll get a double folded handle. If I want to do a handle like I have done here on this bag, I put the first layer through with the batting then I've changed to these regular ones. I've put the grey fabric through. I think it was a one and three quarter inch tool. I then run the glue underneath there and glue that in place. And I'm, you notice I'm putting it over this raw edge. Then I've used the one inch tool, the regular one inch tool out of this pack. And I've glued that on top and then I've stitched down just line it into the middle. Glue it first because that'll hold it perfectly for you while you stitch. Then all I've done is stitch on that side and that side of that hand, that strip there, and that's then secured the three layers for me. And you've got a nice finish on this side. And it just makes for a nice strap for your bag. The other thing that we have for you are the orange set. Now this is the one and a quarter and one and an eighth. So if you just wanted to do a binding for the edge of the quilt, just a regular binding to go around like the bag or the edge of a quilt. Norm normally we cut our fabric two and a half inches. Some people cut their binding strips two and a quarter inches. So if you go two and a quarter inch strip, you put it through the one and one eighth. If you go two and a half, you put it through the one and a quarter inch tool. The tools just eliminate any burnt fingers and you get your binding ironed up so, so quick. And I always join, like most people do, I join my binding on the diagonal, just like I have here. I make sure the seam is pressed away from me. Come back to the beginning, fold your fabric in half. And all we need to do is press about the first inch. So a two and a half inch wide strip now measures one and a quarter. Put it into the one and a quarter tool, go up and over. And I can guarantee your binding will be ironed up in half the time to what it is when you normally stand at your ironing board and fold and press each little piece. All we have to do is hold the fabric so it stays nice and firm with our left hand Put the iron against the tool and all we do is push. And we just keep working down the ironing board. You know, and if you're working off a big ironing board, you'd pin at one end and you'll just keep moving along till you get it all done. Just keep going. 
So both of those tools work exactly the same. But if you're lucky enough to have the full set, these two sizes are in there. It's just that we've done these in the orange for anybody that just wants to buy the sasha tool just to do bindings. So that's some of my favourite tools. I hope you um, get to experiment with them and make up some great, great things. The circles, the bag strappers, the light, the um, set of two, and the hero marker. They're all some of my most favourite tools. And of course, the Roxanne glue always comes into it. I love this glue. So we want you to have fun. We want you to go to our YouTube channel and we'd like you to look at some of our videos that we're putting up there. We're doing lots of videos now. Click that bell so when we put a new video up, you'll get a notification. Also go to our website, www.pqw.com.au and the videos are sitting there for you also. And all of these tools, you can buy them individually, you can buy them in collections, whatever you like. But, and subscribe to get our email newsletter because we've got some exciting things coming for you. So keep enjoying, play with your tools and have fun.